Welcome home, the perfect place to start and end your day. Even for a dream home, this is beyond. But the real star is the walk-in dressing room. You're not gonna believe this. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. As always, we have a show packed with unique homes and I am bringing it to you this week from this modern urban oasis in West Chelsea. As soon as you step into the great room, you'll be dazzled by these sweeping views of the Hudson River, visible through the floor to ceiling walls of glass that seem to dissolve the boundaries between inside and out and make you feel like you're just floating above the buzzing city. Everywhere you turn, this over 4,200 square foot home is filled with natural light that accents the chic decor and architectural details. Every inch of this apartment exudes sophistication and style. And speaking of style, we are starting things off in this expansive loft inside a former chocolate factory in Nolita that's been reimagined into an entertainer's paradise. It features multiple living spaces that flow onto two huge terraces for that most desirable of New York luxuries, indoor outdoor living. Take a look and enjoy. Hi, I'm Brett Mitchell from Compass and I'm really excited today to show you one of the flagship penthouses in Nolita, New York. It's located in a former chocolate factory with 360 degrees of exposure. So this place is filled with natural light all day long. I often say this place feels like a house floating above downtown, but no, this is New York loft living redefined. As soon as you step off the elevator, you enter this private foyer that's flanked by two massive living spaces. One has an informal vibe, while the other is perfect for your more sophisticated soirees. Now this is what I'm talking about. Just imagine what your guests will say when they arrive here. Day or night, it's filled with glamour and elegance with just a touch of sexiness. We have low profile furniture that accentuates the high ceilings and a fireplace cast a romantic glow. Underfoot, there is Brazilian mahogany floors that points to the craftsmanship that went into the creation of this home. And all throughout, there's enough wall space for even the most avid art collector. And there is plenty of room for a formal dining area. And when it's warm out, just open up these oversized French doors. Now this is alfresco living at its best. If you're like me, this south facing wraparound terrace is a dream come true. Dining, lounging, or just enjoying sunset drinks. This will be a summer hotspot. Hungry? This terrace also has direct access to the kitchen. Chef's quality kitchen with an eight burner oven, two refrigerators, two freezers, two ovens, and a 148 bottle wine cooler. This is a type of kitchen that even the most accomplished chef would be thrilled with. And if ordering in is more your thing, there's plenty of room right here on this counter. Or, as we just saw, outside. This is the second great room. A little less formal, but no less perfect. Like the other great room, this has seamless access to a terrace. This one faces west for gorgeous evening light. There's another fireplace and the biggest wet bar you've ever seen. Trust me, the parties you will have here will be epic. And speaking of epic, let's go take a look at the primary bedroom suite. Welcome home, the perfect place to start and end your day. Even for a dream home, this is beyond. Despite its scale, it never stops feeling intimate, comfortable, and above all, luxurious. This corner bedroom has seven oversized windows with an abundance of natural light and there's a spa-like bath that you could charge membership for. But the real star is the walk-in dressing room. You're not gonna believe this. This dressing room is worthy of royalty. Come to think of it, so is this whole home.
So that's the tour. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at what I consider to be one of the finest apartments in downtown Manhattan. See you on the next one. You are gonna wanna stick around for a tour of this architectural marvel in Encinitas, California. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in Encinitas, California, just north of San Diego, where every day feels like a holiday. We're at this cinematic oceanfront home that was inspired by the Crescent Moon, hence its name, the Crescent House, designed by noted architect Wallace E. Cunningham. Oh, and fans of the show Westworld might also recognize it. Hi, this is Guy Ravid with the Altman Brothers, and we are at the Crescent House, located at 532 Neptune Avenue. This one-of-a-kind architectural masterpiece was created by visionary designer Wally Cunningham. As you can see, art and architecture meet right at the entrance. The entire structure centers around a circular terrace, circular courtyard, as well as a crescent-shaped infinity-edge pool. This entire home sits on over 6,300 square feet of interior living space, all highlighted by concrete and steel and floor-to-ceiling glass windows. So the living area is a great example of where modern and minimal meet. The geometry of the architecture is visible everywhere you look. We're on an east-west facing plan so that the light that comes through is striking and dramatic at all times of day. So at sunset, you have gorgeous panoramic views of the water and the sun dipping down over the Pacific. And to the east, you've got the lights that twinkle at night over Encinitas. And very often you'll see tons of surfers because Encinitas is a beach town and even dolphins all day long. The dining tables made of poured concrete that are sunken into the actual foundation, the diamond shape of them sits in such a way that wherever you sit, you have fantastic views. I also see this amazing gourmet chef's kitchen, which by the way, if you're having a dinner party and you decide you don't wanna see the kitchen, how's this for a cool feature? The stunning glass divider hides the bar. Whether you're entertaining a small group of friends or hosting a large party, this one-of-a-kind home in Encinitas is more than a party pad. It's an experience. What a bedroom. What an incredible view to wake up to. 180 degrees of unobstructed ocean view. With a click of a button, all the shades come down and you have great privacy as well. And the primary suite goes right into the bathroom where none of the walls hit the ceiling so that as much light as possible continues to flow through the property. Hello, beautiful. Well, anyway, continuing here, this panoramic window gives you a gorgeous view of the sunrise in the mornings while you're brushing your teeth. And as you walk on this herringbone pan floor, you drop into the custom tub, slope back, beautiful. One of the cool features of this home is the elevator. Unlike most elevators which are closed and confined, this one is bright. So if you don't want to take the elevator, you can also take the stairs. Coming down what looks like a vertebrae of a staircase. And then you're also struck by the steel panels and the glass, which lets sunlight in, but also hide the neighbors from you. This level composes several bedrooms and all leading us up slowly towards the crescendo of the outdoor living spaces. And this is what I was talking about. Crescendo! Set right on the bluffs of beautiful Encinitas on a rare double lot. This gorgeous home really maximizes the coastal living vibe with multiple decks, patios and terraces. Here you really get to see the interaction between nature, art and architecture as you see all the windows flow through the house and you literally can see from one end to the next. This completes your tour of the Crescent House. I'm Guy Ravid with the Altman Brothers. Thanks for visiting. Coming up, we are in Brooklyn to see what this designer did to give her clients duplex style and function.
Welcome back, everyone. Now we're with interior designer Marie Burgos at this charming duplex in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn, that she designed for her clients. See how she took a cold white box and turned it into a playful home filled with style and functionality. Take a look. What I love about interior design, it's about transforming spaces for people that corresponds to their personality and supports their lifestyle. I'm Marie Burgos from Marie Burgos Design and Collection. Welcome to my newest project in Carol's Garden, Brooklyn. The design inspiration for this home was first and foremost my client's Brazilian heritage. Celebrating nature, light, love, what we call in France, joie de vivre. This floor, as you can see, is an open concept. For this living area, I wanted it to feel like a tropical vacation. We use lots of warm woods, natural materials, and a few touches of greenery. Designing a space is all about balancing the yin and the yang. We chose this curve so far as a contrast to that very elongated rectangular room. While all the seatings makes a design statement, they're also super comfortable, which is very important in a living room. One of the defining features of this home is the millwork, which you'll see throughout. It not only provides warmth and beauty, but also functionality. Storage, as any New Yorker knows, is prime, but always remember to make it look chic. Right off the living room is the very modern kitchen, and a welcoming breakfast nook. Here we've installed Calacata Gold marble countertop and backsplash. We've also replaced all the hardware in a dramatic black matte finish. And the bar stools are in the same style as these dining chairs. Overall, I wanted this area to feel like you're dining at the beach with the sand in your feet. It was important that the baby's room had a real sense of wonder. So I've integrated this custom-made wallpaper with dreamy characters. The kids' room is all about discovery. So we incorporated this play area with both table seating and a sofa with lots of textures to grasp. And of course, we still have the millwork following through on the ceiling. Here in the bedroom, I created an oasis of relaxation with a mix of hardwood material and plush surfaces. The custom cabinetry provides warmth and function with a full armoire and a desk area, as well as a custom platform bed in mixed materials. The light velvet upholstery of the headboard and the plush shot rug also bring soft, comfortable elements. So that the TV is not the dominant element on this wall, I dressed it up with this romantic wallpaper that reminds me of a summer evening in the country. The chandelier and pendant lights in custom hand-blown glass are real treasures. They provide a peaceful atmosphere and just add to the overall romance of the room. The family room on the garden level is the perfect space for entertaining in style. As with upstairs, this is an open floor plan and I wanted to make sure all the elements from the rest of the home were down here. Of course, the meal work brings a lot of functionality in the space, as well as lots of warmth and style. Plus, there's the bar hidden behind one of the doors. I told you this area was created for entertainment. All of it floats out to the back garden, which is a dream to have, especially in New York. I hope you have enjoyed discovering this beautiful duplex in the heart of Brooklyn, where functionality, nature, and a Brazilian way of life comes together in style. Au revoir. We're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we are in Tribeca for a look at this live work loft. Welcome back everyone. Creating an ideal live work environment is always a challenge, but for interior designer Colin King, it was a necessity to accommodate his growing firm. Colin is the author of Arranging Things and he just happened upon the perfect space inside an old industrial building in Tribeca. Take a look. What I love about design is how emotional it can be. I think the best spaces have an emotive quality that you really can experience. Hey, I'm Colin King here in my live-work loft in Tribeca. 
When I first saw the space, I knew it would be a real challenge. I was very intimidated by its size. I was unsure how to make it cozy and feel like home. But like my grandfather said, in order to have things you've never had, you have to do things you've never done. Come on, let me show you. When I first saw the apartment, I fell in love with the bones, but I knew I needed to make it my own. This is the entrance. It's an elevator. It comes right up to the apartment. It is something I only dreamed of as a kid and couldn't imagine this being my space. So you may or may not have noticed yet, but beige is my favorite color. Some of my friends actually joke that I dream in 50 shades of brown. It's funny though, the color of the walls were really informed by the floors. The floors were the first thing we did. They were dark and shiny. I stripped them. What was revealed were these beautiful original pine floors and I wanted to keep the natural color. And now they've even opened up the space more. Welcome to my office. So the central architectural feature of this room are these doors. I really wanted to keep the natural light coming in to keep it nice, light and airy. This space to me is an incubator for ideas. I really wanted to surround myself with books, images, inspirations that I love. Anchoring the entire space is this 18th century Baroque table I found at one of my favorite galleries, Deanston Daughter. And to complement the table, I designed these custom bookshelves to house my many books, and believe it or not, this is just half of my collection. In a lot of my spaces, I love to play with scale, so I added this Akari Lantern by Noguchi. But also to soften the space, I went with an oversized shearling chair. It's actually called the Tired Man Chair, and I love to just curl up and read a book there. And right off my office is the primary bedroom. I've always loved a dark bedroom, and I think the first thing that stands out to people is the color, called Deep Reddish Brown by Farrow and Ball. Unintentionally mixed with the paneling, it almost feels like I'm in a sauna, but I do really love it here. In addition to a dark bedroom, I love a low bed. I just love having a lot of space between me and the ceiling. It's another way for these small rooms to feel bigger. So another one of the benefits about keeping this room dark and cavernous is just the dramatic transition of walking into my living room. The one factor that sold me on the apartment was all this natural light. It's the first thing that you notice when walking in and it's so rare to find in New York City apartments. To keep it light, we kept it beige. I tried countless colors in here, but really this color was the only one that could absorb all the red that was reflected from the buildings around me. I wanted to start with a quite dramatic piece. This day bed is 12 feet long, and it's just like a beautiful anchoring piece to the room. So I chose to place the sofa here because it faces north and it has constant light. Of course it's beige because it just acts like a beautiful canvas for the rest of the pieces in the space. Undeniably, there's a large dramatic tree to my right. And in fact, it's not a tree, it's a branch. There's actually just a bunch of sandbags holding that branch in place. So wherever I'm working, I really love to find local flea markets and hunt for treasures. This one I found in Pasadena. It's an 18th century colonial cabinet. I actually love to put some rocks in there for my travels. Designing this apartment, I learned so much through trial and error, but ultimately it's a representation of me, my work, and the things that bring me joy. Thanks for taking the tour. For even more design inspiration, definitely check out Colin's book, Arranging Things, out now. Coming up next, we are chilling in the Hamptons with this restaurateur. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're with restaurateur Andrea Anthony, one of the owners of the famed Hamptons destination, The Lobster Roll, AKA Lunch. She shows us her own welcoming cozy cottage. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Andrea from The Lobster Roll, and this is Vinny. Welcome to my beach house in Amagansett. Come on in, and I'll show you around. This is the den, a place to just kind of kick back and relax, maybe watch a little TV. We chose stone floors, and you can even spot a fossil or two if you look closely. My mother was a classically trained pianist. Unfortunately, it seems that musical talent skipped a generation. So my husband and I purchased this player piano and we truly enjoy listening to classical music. Come on out. So out here, this is what it's all about. Soaking up the sun, 
taking a nice, refreshing dip in the pool and al fresco dining. We built a lot of decks around the house. Each area has a different feel to it. This deck is great in the middle of the day when the sun is shining, but the pergola is a great spot to go when you need some shade. Even if all this feels like paradise, my favorite deck is upstairs where you catch beautiful views of the ocean. It's just a great spot to enjoy these natural surroundings. Up here consists of our living room, our dining room, and our kitchen. It has a feeling of being all open. It's bright and airy with amazing views. And the North Terrace captures a beautiful view of the sunset and the bay. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed my beach house. For me, this is truly a slice of paradise. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>